Cougs house. We're about to kick off the 2024 football season at the end of this month, which begs the question, what has Willie Fritz spent the summer cooking up? You are Locked On Cougs, your daily podcast on the Houston Cougars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Cougs, daily podcast about your Houston Cougars. I'm your host, Houston-born teacher and coach Parker Ainsworth. And whether you're a Cougs fan or just a hater can stop by, thank you for making Locked On Cougs your first listen of the day. I appreciate you making us your first listen each and every day. If you want to join the conversation but don't know what to say, Tell us in the comments down below as we're wrapping up summer. If you're taking a vacation, are you more of a beach person or a mountains person when it comes to getting out of town and turning everything off? Locked on Cougs is brought to you today by FanDuel, America's number one sports book. More on that fun later. But we're about to kick off the first Willie Fritz football season in Houston, and he spent his summer working. I mean, working on flipping these recruiting tables around. So, you know, we've got to bring in special Locked On guest, Brian Smith, who's a Locked On recruiting expert to help break down what all's been going down for the Cougs. Let's bring on Brian. And we are joined by Locked On's recruiting expert, Brian Smith. Brian, I ask you this every time. It's not going to be a goofy question, but don't you just love how Houston makes you deep dive on these smaller Texas area high schools? It's not my first choice. (laughs) They've they've gotten a few kids from some bigger schools. I'm curious about the defensive lineman they got from Mansfield, stuff like that, and and your take. I haven't watched his film, but, you know, getting four-star D lineman never goes out of style. Never will, especially (laughs) in passing Big 12 and all that kind of stuff. That Uh, is a good For the folks – that haven't heard Brian on the show before. Brian is a national recruiting expert, and I feel sometimes like Houston makes him work the hardest um, because it's a very specific (laughs) type of recruitment happening with Houston Cougar football. Um, Brian, I want to talk to you about one guy in the class 2024 before going to guys currently being recruited, and that is Kobe Young. Now, Kobe is a six-foot, buck 70 kid out of New Orleans, I went to Holy Cross High School, and his name has drawn a lot of attention at camp. He's caught some big touchdowns. People are talking about the speed. I think if you're looking at a route tree, like the top end of the route tree is kind of what he's excelled at at the University of Houston thus far in camp. Um, What can you tell us about Holy Cross, New Orleans, or Kobe as he's about to suit up for Houston at the end of the month? The two things that I can say is Holy Cross always had some players, but it's, it's not one of the dominant programs there. St. Aug is by far the most dominant private school in the upper echelon. But they got a kid from there right off the bat as soon as the staff took over. You know, because a lot of those guys have ties to New Orleans with being at Tulane, that's important. So I think that more than anything else is a key because New Orleans is like Houston. Per capita, it's one of the best cities in the country. And then secondarily – I think Houston needs more speed and stuff, not on just defense, but offense. This is a kid from New Orleans. I don't have to watch the film. He can run. Uh, they they wouldn't take him otherwise. That That's a great sign for them. And for what you said, he's tearing it up already. That doesn't surprise me. The New Orleans kids that I've always dealt with have zero fear. None. <laughs> uh, some of the wives that they've grown up in, they yeah. shouldn't fear football field. That's the easier part of their day. No, for sure. And that's not to say there aren't other, I guess, other cities that happens in, but New Orleans very specifically being in Willie Fritz's previous recruiting backyard. Houston's made a big deal about trying to use that Louisiana pipeline. Sure. Um, and, and this was someone that committed to Willie Fritz once he came over. This is not a Dana Holgerson holdover by any stretch. Um, oh, and it's, Dana wouldn't have got that kid. There's no <laughs> That's the clip right there. Dana Wood, you just made a lot of people really happy without knowing it. That Dana guy Wood. stinks at recruiting, okay? okay. <laughs> I mean, hey, hey, do you see this is total tangential? Do you see he's advising up at TCU right now? It's on, For, Dykes pulled him in? Well, as an offensive analyst, the guy knows offense. Yeah, That, that, that I'm not – If you if he steps foot in the recruiting office, he should be fired. <laughs> the office for the offensive part good to go 
<laughs> well, and Brian, we've been saying that since he had his quote, but I think off air, you probably felt that way for a little bit longer, even. Uh, <laughs> 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 I'm not going to make it on too many rabbit holes. Um, one kid that committed to Willie Fritz and the Cougs as well is a class of 2026 kid. So I went 24, now 2026. Keyshawn Henderson is a, a, I mean, he's the number one overall ATH athlete position in the 2026 class. Um, people have him as the top kids of Texas in the 2026 class. He's from spring. So just outside of town, but goes to legacies of this legacy, the school of sports sciences. I'm going to get that right one day, high school, uh, smaller high school, obviously a little private school. And he does everything. He plays wide out, plays safety, plays running back, plays corner. Um, even seen him in the box some for them on film. And he plays quarterback and he's adamant about playing quarterback in college. I want to ask you two questions. One, what typically happens to a guy's recruitment when they get this fifth star added to their recruitment? With him, we all knew he was anyway, but I think the only reason he hadn't gone up earlier is the competition he had played and he didn't necessarily go across the country um, all this year, uh, just a little bit. And then he kind of blew up when he went to the OT seven finals and stuff. And I got to meet him and all he's a nice kid. But once everybody put eyes on him, like his legs are as long as a grasshopper in proportion. Like it's insane. He, he looks like the kid that plays played for Jimmy Bayheim 25 years ago at Syracuse as the two guard. It's kind of how he's built to put it in perspective. So I'm not surprised that he went up, but it would have been faster if he like if he played at North Shore or if he played at Spring or if he played at Montgomery, one of the schools over there, you know, the Woodlands, he'd have went up fast. It's just easier to evaluate it. But we saw him at OT7 finals, and then I also saw him at Future 50 Under Armour. It's top players in the country. One of my buddies trains, has played major college football and all that. And we were talking to one of the other guys. We're like, there's no question. If he were to commit to receiver, free safety, or corner, he'd be the number one at any of those three positions in the country. But I mean, full on commit to that position. Neither one, Nobody thinks he's a quarterback. So it's, it's just hard to rank him because if you're not going to use your best position, where, where do you go? So I don't think he's a quarterback, but he is a freak athlete. Well, and before we get to the quarterback issue, because I, I do have questions and, and thoughts on that. For a school like Houston, just moved into the Power Four, uh, frankly, has had their backyard raided by big schools for these type of kids in the past. Does adding the fifth star add cause for concern about someone poaching the kid on a verbal commitment? Because he's a 2026 kid. He's got a lot of recruitment left. Doesn't change anything because everybody thought he was a top 10, top 15 player anyway. Again, our reason he wasn't, Playing quarterback, there's nobody that thinks that I know of that thinks his best spot's quarterback, not one. And then secondly, some of his films still circulated. All the colleges want him, but they don't want him a quarterback. He could be the number two, three, or four player in the country if he said, I'm playing free safety. You done. Well, and that speaks to the athleticism. He's listed at six, four, a buck 75, and just has a different gear than everyone else does. Like, he I got freaking run, brother. And stop and start, too, for a long kid, which makes him very applicable to gridiron because you know you don't know where the ball's going he'll change directions to beat a guy that's got a head start it's incredible and we've seen athletic quarterbacks i mean everyone's going to go to a lamar jackson but even at houston you've had greg ward right i mean it, it may be a little bit further back um i guess my thought is does him being vocal committing to quarterback and houston recruiting him as so make this a lot more of a lock if these other big schools aren't going to take that chance that's an interesting thing. I don't know if anybody else has told him that he can definitely play quarterback. I'm guessing that nobody did because he ended his recruitment so quickly. If so, I, Just hypothetically, if Kiffin, who obviously knows quarterback, said, I at least want to see you at camp. I'm not guaranteeing you anything. He probably would have. I, I, I'm not an Ole Miss fan, but I understand if quarterback looks at Ole Miss. He didn't do any of that this summer. So – I just think he likes the coaching staff at Houston. He's set on playing quarterback, and that's it. All right. Now, if Willie Fritz is trying to build a football team to go win Big 12 championships sometime in the near future, he's going to need passion, drive, and patience. And that's the form for winning championships. And it's also 
the formula for keeping your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. More than the speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your parts guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back because the eBay Motors, you're burning rubber and not cash. With all the parts you need, the price you want to see to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep ride that life at eBayMotors.com. Also, it's only exclusive by eBay Guaranteed Fit. It's only available to you as customers. I, well, I, and I it's think the hometown school. Together. It's the I hometown think. school. His high school coach has some connection to the Willie Fritz staff from his oh, junior oh, college playing oh, days. That helps. Um, <laughs> it helps a lot. I just want to stress: he had offers without positions listed from Arizona State, Arkansas, Baylor, Cal, Colorado, Kansas, LSU, Michigan, Missouri, Nebraska, Oklahoma, Oregon, Penn State, Pitt, TCU, Texas A and M, Texas Tech. Uh, Washington, Washington said everyone wanted this kid. And I feel like Houston saying, we'll want you to play whatever position you want to play. Just, we need young campus. Gave them a big leg up in this. Um, and your experience, because you've done this recruiting thing for a long time, um, top nationally ranked athletes transitioning into quarterback has to be the most challenging thing to do. Right. I mean, it's a very mentally taxing position to play. It takes a lot of practice and work. He's playing it at the high school level at a small high school. I don't mean to say he's never done it before, but this jump is a big one, right? Vince Young is the only guy that I know of, ironically, a Houston area kid, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Madison. And uh, oh, okay. Yeah. I knew it was somewhere in the area. It's interesting because I remember like Tom Wimming or somebody said back in the day, He's my number one player, but I think he is as a receiver a long time. Like his second pick, if I remember, instead of Texas, was Miami as a receiver. Can you imagine him in that offense in that era? <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> that wouldn't have been fair. But the point is, there aren't many. Um, Lamar was one. He was raw. But say what you will about a certain guy who likes to ride motorcycles with his interns at Arkansas. He knew how to coach quarterbacks. And he did. Were, he did. I mean, he's, he's – and now he's back at Arkansas, by the way. That's wild. <laughs> it, it, college football, you just never know, man. Uh, I would have bet heavily against that, but here we are. It happens. It happens. <laughs> Outside of those two, I mean, there are a lot of guys. It just depends on how you want to label it. How about shoelaces at Michigan? Yeah. Not a pure quarter, but my God, could he run? <laughs> that was ridiculous. So there's some guys like Jamel Holloway back in the day, played at Oklahoma. He could have played five positions. Yeah. Since that was the option days, they put him a quarterback. But like he, he was unbelievable. So there's only so much you can do until you get him on the field. You don't know what they're, you know, how much are they going to be able to pick up post snap reads when they don't even have their footwork down yet because they played five positions in high school. It is impossible to project. And you think they're not going to play him at multiple spots at this little school? He can't prepare for Houston like if he was at North Shore and their quarterback or even any other position. They need him everywhere. So it'll be unique to see how he transitions. Well, and, and I would stress on Keyshawn too, the, um, you know, he is still, he's a 2026 kid. There's a lot of development left to happen. Um, and, and frankly, he doesn't have to start day one at quarterback. I do think he's athletic enough where you might have to put him somewhere on the field. Right. But like Ryan Tannehill started off as a receiver once upon a time too. Like these guys. That's, that's a good point right there. You never know. That's not a bad point. I, I just, I think Houston's got this leg up because they'll let him play it. And, and you know, I, we'll see how it plays out in the long term. Because typically, I do think there'd be concern about, like, well, LSU's going to offer him LSU money or AM's going to offer him AM money. Or, and, and that would be a big concern for a school like Houston that doesn't have all the NIL dollars and stuff like that. That's the elephant in the room. But let, let me throw something out at you. I, I just, th this is ridiculous to me. That if, if what I'm picking up from you is true, Houston is in the state of Texas. Houston is basically ground zero for oil. If Houston doesn't have at least one booster willing to help out, then Houston is a terrible football program. There's no way you can tell me there isn't one person that can, for this kid in particular, like special, special player, if they can't get it done, that's on Houston. Because he's going to get those offers. I guarantee it. 
Well, and they're making a change at the athletic director spot. You know, locked on Kooks fan for about that all summer long. Um, we've been trying to track what they're going to do, who they're going to bring in. I think lack of NIL funding was a big reason they got rid of the last guy, right? And so, gotta um, have it, brother. Finding yeah, a fundraiser no is a big deal. It's a big I, deal I mean, for this. It's a it's a big deal. Like Fritz is a very good coach. I don't know how he'll fundraise because he's a to B guy, but it's a big, it's a melting pot of people. You got to have some, some boosters and it can go many directions. Like uh, there are a couple different quarterbacks that are like Brady Quinn for Notre Dame, like helps run their collective. He's on Fox. Like that's, that's perfect. Yeah. But there are other guys too, but you need something. I mean, Brady, but it has to be somebody that is popular. If Andre Ware was involved, I am going to go out on him and guess that would help the Cougs. <laughs> well, I mean, and, and awesome. So, I think they use his name and face a lot in marketing and be about getting involved in this type of marketing that go a long way. That's what I'm saying. And I don't know. I'm not putting it on Andre. Like his, his wife. No. Yeah. Like, no. <laughs> yeah, never see you as it is anyway. But there has to be somebody where when they walk in the room without introduction, everybody knows who they are. There's no friend way there. Yeah. That's, that's just the way it is. And there's only so many of those guys. And quarterback is top of the board. Um, Jeff Blake, who ironically is the quarterback coach at IMG. I'm sure East Carolina still got, he played 14 years in the NFL, then one year out of practice. Yeah. He gets called from him every day. Yeah, for you know sure. I mean? Well, and you know, Case Keenum's right there playing for the Houston Texans. You, you could pull somebody. Oh, that somebody. would be because he's, I don't know what's legal with that, but like with, you know, this part of the boost, surely to God, he would two or three times a year go speak. Well, and, and you got to know that um, for a guy that came out of the small town, that, like Houston was the big time for Case, and then he turned it into bigger time. Like, I feel like there'd be some mutual beneficial kind of like gratitude. To, yeah, I don't know. He There's came some... up as not a four or five star guy, right? Right. That's a great story anyway. So right. he's the perfect guy. Ware was recruited as a DB. There's another athlete. He was mad because Texas so wanted him as a DB. I remember right. <laughs> yeah, out of Dickens in high school. Him. Yeah, yeah. worked out for him. So. <laughs> Heisman <laughs> Trophy would speak loud, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Solid. Solid. <laughs> um, so Keyshawn is presently committed, and, and I'm, I'm just, you know, I want to make sure we hold on to him. I do want to talk about a couple big guys in the 2025 class that are committed to come in and help block for him. Um, I first want to talk about a local kid from Second Baptist High School, R.J. Lee, listed at 6'8", 335. But in pre-pod, we were both like, this dude's even bigger than that. If he's 335, I'm 7'3". <laughs> I'm 5'10", by the way. <laughs> he's bigger. 6'8", um, 335, and I mean... I'll, I'll buy the 6'8". He's yeah. big. Like his, he's a kid you put on the basketball team. He scored five points, but he only had 12 boards. Uh, well, and, you know, Houston has such a strong basketball program. People have made that connection. Can, you know, does he have a drop step? Um, I guess I want to ask you, because being that big at Second Baptist High School, uh, you talk about level of competition with Keyshawn. There's no one on the field half that big, right? And so what, when you watched him on tape, when you want look at his stuff, he's big, he's strong. Um, I, you know, I've made the argument, and you can tell me I'm wrong, he might could stand to lose 30 pounds. Here's the theory. Long term, most schools would rather get the 280, 290 kid that's just got great feet and keeps moving up. Like Joe Alt, mm -hmm. quite tight end most of his high school career. But a lot of guys like that. On the other side, you got what George is doing. By the way, that's a solid football program. We're <laughs> taking guys that are like their last class had six kids, none of them under 320. Yeah. They run their, their strength program is different. So it depends on your methodology, but Georgia runs more than any other school. It's obviously working for them. So how you run your strength program is part of that, but based on how he's built, how he moves, he's got to work on his flexibility for sure. Get better first start out of the gate, but he's got heavy hands, man. Um, if he can change his body, I don't know what the weight will be. He might be a three fifty guy forever. But if he just changes his body and can rotate and move a little better, that half step in football is a difference between watching the game with me on the couch or getting paid. You got to move your feet after contact. Right now, he's he's got a long way to go with that, but his length is awesome and heavy hands. That's it, something it, to work with. Can't teach length. 
And I would say to some degree, you can't even really teach the heavy hand. I mean, you either got kind of have it, or like well, you can make him heavier, but you either got it or you get it, you don't, right? It's funny watching him play again. There's a few kids on his film that are okay, but most of them aren't good. And he makes them look like human projectiles. <laughs> Which is which is awesome. It's a great thing. Like you want you him to dominate. dominate the, this guy, yeah. Right. If you're going to play against inferior competition, and he does, you better be dominant at 350. And he and, kicks the living crap out of the guys because he should. All right. Now, look, if you can't wait to get to the winning until the end of August when football season kicks off, this summer, FanDuel has all customers getting different kinds of boosts and bonuses daily. It's great to win at FanDuel. It's great to win in the summertime at FanDuel. That's right. There's something for everyone every day all summer long. Head over to FanDuel.com and start making the most out of your summer. We've talked ad nauseum about like what to look at with the Astros this summer. Right now, the Astros are at minus 185 to win the AL West. Okay, so those odds have gotten to be where they are because they've had a great June and July. But they're only at plus 600 to win the American League outright. And if you still think that they can win the World Series, which you know I do, they are at plus 1,400 to win the World Series as of the recording of this episode. So head over to FanDuel.com and start making the most out of your summer with different boosts and bonuses daily. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. It's and, fun to watch, though. I and mean. he's another guy. He's listed as a three-star guy. He had a handful of other Power 4 offers uh, before choosing Houston, ultimately. I wonder if... If he played at, and maybe I don't know if he'd, you know, North Shore when he'd gone in the field uh, before his junior year or whatever, but if he'd have played at a bigger program at that size, you know, well, you know what would have North Shore from eighth grade on with the coaching they have? I'm not saying he'd have been dominant, but he'd have gotten a, an idea by his sophomore year if he could be that guy. Right. They'd have told him. And, and that's not the only program, but that's, I'm just using that. No, that as a national recruiting guy, practice, they, you're going to lose reps too. But that's okay because that's how you get better. The old saying, iron sharpens iron. Yeah. He's not seeing that in practice. They ain't got no 350 kid. He can play no. dance in practice. So No. I, and, and to be fair, most schools that size, no, it's not just specific to second Baptist. Right? They just, it's just a smaller, a smaller school. He's joined in that class by a kid that is probably, I want to say closer to normal size, but still very big. <laughs> um that's and really Ethan funny. Thomas, Ethan Thompson, Ethan Thompson, six four three ten, uh, at a Waco chose Houston over Baylor, which is a big deal right now given the very public way that Baylor is going about a recruiting. Wild conversation we could have all to itself. <laughs> I'm so, seeing some of the posts on like we pay players, and it's not like I'm like it just sounds goofy. But yeah, Baylor is promoting it very heavily. So he commits to Houston over Baylor. Um, he's from Waco. First of all, I guess you're talking about the player himself. You were more impressed, I think, by Ethan than by RJ. Well, he's more advanced, but his body's ready to play. At, like 6'4", 310 is a common weight that you would see in the Big 12 or the yeah. SEC, Big 10, or ACC. Yeah. And he does it. I mean, the difference between going through even one year of strength and conditioning at the major level compared to not is unbelievable. The train. I'm sure you've seen the photos. It doesn't matter. Quarterback to punter. These guys change in a year as a redshirt freshman, you know, like I well, guess two because he's got still got to finish out high school. That kid's going to be 315 pounds, but his waist size will go down a notch. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like he's got a chance to be, I think he can play guard or tackle, but depending on what they want to run there, he could be your right or left tackle. It's hilarious that you're stealing him out of the backyard or one of your rivals in your con. <laughs> that is not normal. And I saw like where he was from. I'm like, really? So I'm like, I, I was curious to ask you about it, but it, I was figured you could say, well, Baylor didn't want it. Baylor did offered it. him. Um, they did offer him a late. Houston was in first. Um, and they offered him afterwards. Uh, it looks like he, you know, they offered him before he committed, though. I wonder if there's some loyalty to that in Fritz. I do think he had a two-lane offer from back when Fritz was at Tulane. See, that matters, brother. Relate. And I think there's some some connection there, right? He's like, hey, these guys sure. have been with me for a long time. Um, and so I, I think that level of recruitment helps a lot, too. That's a big part of it. I told somebody this on another show today. Everybody bitches about Oregon and their ability 
to go out and spend money. They got the all-time greatest booster, and his name is Phil Knight. He owns Nike, in case you haven't heard of that company. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, oh, they're just buying everybody. They're getting kids that they don't even offer as much NIL money to. People get mad at me for saying that because Oregon's going into Maryland, Illinois, Texas, mm -hmm. everywhere. Their staff does a great job with relationships early. Even with the NIL, and yes, they have plenty, you're not getting kids with that relationship. So good for Fritz and all them showing that, like, Houston is not Oregon. Okay, I think we can safely say that. Yet. We'll say we'll put yet on that. Okay. Well, <laughs> when, they get, when they get their own Nike, call me. You can get me a job there. But the point is still the same. You have to have relationships. You're not getting these kids. Two-star kid, five-star kid. They want to feel comfortable. Why wouldn't they? The guy they're going to see every day. That, I mean, it's no fun to be somewhere where you you hate your coach. It's well, and and a more relatable thing to those of us, you know, the average person, it's it's like your boss. You're picking a boss that you exactly. get along with, and you you know better. Um, you know, because you wouldn't pick a, the same job everywhere. Pick the one that you feel comfortable. With. And it's literally the same job everywhere. Um, anyway, True. it 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 rounds out of the 2025 class. Um, as we wrap up the summer, we're now in August. Uh, seniors in high school are playing their senior season. And, and frankly, a lot of kids spend their summer making these decisions so they can focus on that senior season. I want to ask you in terms of recruiting timelines, because Houston is relatively new to the power four schedule, which seems to be a little bit faster than the group of five schedule was because you kind of got a lot of kickbacks at the group of five and so on. Right. Um, Houston's ranked currently their class of 2025 is 44th overall. It's about middle of the big 12 at eighth. Um, you know, I, you could talk about their industry target school class score as an 86 and they have handful of four star, three star kind of guys. Um, does it feel like in your expertise, like whatever you've got by about mid August, you're probably set with until about December. No. Um, not in today's world. Um, if you're doing your job, every day is the best day of the year for recruiting. And I know that sounds cliche, but if you look at their, their states, they've only got two states, Texas and Louisiana. I got 14 Texans and four from the Bayou. I'm surprised it's actually not a little higher than that with the Bayou, but uh, they're getting they're doing a little better than the Houston area, which is good. Uh, that's the first thing. And I think the game day, I don't know who's their best game in September at home. Best game in September. Uh, I mean, or, or the August 31st weekend, whatever it is. The August 31st weekend is UNLV at home, home opener. Um, You're trying to get kids to come to at least be interested. This is two part. I know they're not going to admit this publicly. They want to finish in the top two or three for as many kids as possible because they'll get the rebound kids in the portal too. They have a chance to be a dominant portal team in the right way because Fritz won't take idiots like some. No, he doesn't. Will. And he'll take the kids that didn't go somewhere and cause a ton of trouble and get booted. They'll want to come back to the, you know, the Bayou or somewhere near Houston area. I bet you they get two or three kids a year moving forward because he's a good coach. They got a good staff. That's the other part with this. And being loyal to all these kids, again, 14 Texans, four kids from the Bayou. No other state has got a kid that's committed to the Houston Cougars right now. Do you think that's accidental? <laughs> I do not. He he mentioned at Big 12 Media Days he was only going for kids that he could drive to go see. He wasn't getting on a plane, right? And um, that's a little extreme, I think, for a guy like yourself that looks at this at a national level. But it certainly seems to be the way that the commits have worked out. <laughs> well, I'm looking at – I remember telling you the biggest difference between the kids that are not Power 5 that are playing like, – like Memphis could be – they could play in the Power, power 4 now, I guess – and they could be towards the bottom of the They'd be competitive. They're in a major city. It's kind of like Houston. But there aren't many like that that have that advantage. Houston can go up pretty quick. But I said, the key's going to be the line. I've told you that on this pod many mm -hmm. times. And I'm sitting here looking at the list as I scroll through. I see D linemen from like Fulcher High School. I see kids from Katy. Like they're, they're getting the kids in the suburban Houston area that aren't necessarily the elite elite kids but are, they're going to be hungry mad that Texas didn't want them just to be point blank. This is the kind of class. This was so smart what they did. This is the kind of class they can build on. And again, they're not going to be great this year. they will be decent year two, but I bet you year three, because they'll have more continuity. You got more local kids. They'll add a few portal guys. 
people will start catching on with Houston. I, I'm very high on Fritz, and I know you are too. But they're recruiting the right kids. He's, he's going to have a low transfer rate. All of this is good for the Cougs long term. Well, and I've been trying to stress to folks throughout the summer, like this first year, they've got a difficult schedule. They had a lot of talent leave in the transfer portal because the coaching change. Like they could lose a lot of games this year and still means the coaching change. What like they they got the right guy. Like th- this first year is not. It's going to be qualitative, not quantitative, as far as the data. Um, like at home, they in conference they got Iowa State, Utah. Kansas State and Baylor, like that. <laughs> that's a tough slate of home games for your conference games. If they go two and two, they'll probably done very well, right? If they if they beat Baylor and Iowa State, you're like, okay, they had a pretty good season in the Big Twelve. And like, I, I say that to say that, like, you mentioned, like having recruits out for a fun home game atmosphere, even in a close competitive like loss, but you display the right culture elements. I think you could show a kid a good time at those games. That's the, that's the key. You've got to show the blueprint for what you're trying to develop. I've talked to coaches about this before. The environment, how the game day works, how we set up like they have 6 a.m. meetings and all that with coaches. Players come in a little after that. How the day works, all the festivities. It's going to be – I'm curious. I have no idea. I'm not even sure you do. How the fans will support it, even he's a legit coach. But it's still like most of the people down where you live are going to root for one or two schools that you don't like very much. And, you know, the other in states, that's just the way it is. Who comes out? How often? How like those things matter? And that's not they're going to try to get people out. I'm sure they got every ticket deal possible to get people to come out. But if they do a decent job with that, I guarantee you the orchestration with the game day that you can't turn around to lane unless you know what you're doing. That's not a friendly <laughs> place. To win football games, <laughs> you win yeah. at Tulane, brother. You can win about anywhere. So, and I, I give him credit. I, I think that stuff will go well, even if they don't win the game. Like, if they get beat by two touchdowns by Utah, is that going to surprise anybody? They're really good. But how did the day go? Can I fit in? Can I be the guy that helps used to be competitive against them in a year or two? That's what you're trying to sell. Well, and I would stress that you mentioned what Willie Fritz did at Tulane. Second game of the year, Houston goes to Norman. Uh, if you remember, Tulane scared the P out of Norman <laughs> a couple years back when Tulane was there as well. I remember they, seeing that on a scoreboard. I remember where I was, and I'm like, <laughs> what is going on? They they beat USC and Caleb Williams. Like, like, like he's done crazier things in the past. Year one would be a really quick ask. I don't mean to say it's going to happen. He but knows like, that, too. He knows that. But it he's done crazy things as well. Brian, you're covering programs all over the country in recruiting, uh, yeah, Florida State stuff. You've got Auburn stuff. Yeah, all kinds of stuff going on all the time. Where can people find you and all the national recruiting stuff that you got going on? Um, I'm on too many podcasts to list that right now because there's so many. But <laughs> at FB Scout underscore Florida on X, it's it's the easiest way. I comment on a lot of things. Uh, talking to recruits, it's random. I do Auburn work. I do Miami work. Florida State. I, I'm the Southeast guy. But I'm going to be a little more national this year. I have, I have a few things that I'm curious about. I'll end the show on this. Houston is getting to the point where they're going to be fun for even me to follow this year. Maybe not. <laughs> it's going to be, I, I think they're a five and seven team, is my guess. Something like that is probably about right. But I'm telling you, the last, let's, let's just say three games. That's the last 25%. Houston will start to show signs against. So I don't even know who the last three games are. There's going to be at least one of those games. They're not favored. They're probably going to be an underdog by 12 on the road. It'll be in the fourth quarter. You're going to send me a text, and you're going to be like, they might win this game because that's what they do. As Houston fans, you have to be patient because you're not Ohio State's roster. But at the same time, once kids see what he can do with a shaky situation, have a few spots probably, and find ways to – because he's going to out-scheme guys. I guarantee it. Houston will be a fun story by the end of this season. Remember I said that. That last game of the season, anyway, at BYU, that's – That would be – I mean, that's, that's a historical that kind of game. program, and they, they're not great. That could be the kind of game that helps you – maybe they get to 6-6 six and six and make a bowl game. I don't know how all the bowls will work out this year, but that could be your springboard into the offseason too. That could be the kind of game you're talking about. Brian, thanks again for coming on talking Houston recruiting. We know we make you work really hard. We appreciate the work you do, man. Thanks again. I expect two checks, not one. 
Thanks again to Brian for coming on and helping break down the way Houston fits into the national recruiting conversation as he always does so, so well. I really recommend following Brian for national recruiting stories, but I hope you felt the palpable level of intrigue he has what Houston's building because what Willie Fritz has going on is unbelievable. It's a great time to be a Coug. He's telling you why, so make sure you follow him as well. If you look for a second listen of the day, I'm recommending Locked On Big 12 because Drake's doing a great job breaking down, getting into the conference, preseason rankings, preseason awards, all that kind of stuff as well. So make sure you check out Drake Toll at Locked On Big 12. Locked On Cougars is a proud member of the Locked On Podcast. Now it's your team, our Houston Cougars, every day. Go Cougs.